Thank you, Steve. Please and sing in the house for the prayer. And appreciate so much your presence this morning. We're glad that you're here. Um, hope that you've had a good week. And I know with the snow and the ice and stuff, the kids had a good week. Um, and maybe some of us, us adults did as well. I'm ready for it to go now. I'm ready for spring. Uh, I've seen what I want to see, but I know that's not happening. Uh, it's a good thing I'm not in, uh, not in charge of the weather. Uh, I don't need to be. Um, one of the characters in the Old Testament that is pretty, uh, it's always amazing as you read about him, is a character of Job. And uh, if you want to go this morning to Job chapter 1, uh, we're going to start there today, but kind of start a lesson uh, that I hope will be beneficial to you. And in Job chapter 1, we find Job is a man uh, that has a lot of stuff. And in reality, when you think about it, in, in today's society, um, we're constantly being bombarded with the idea that you've got to have a lot of stuff. You need to have all kinds of things, right? I mean, you need to, to be able to have all this stuff in order to be happy and be prosperous. Well, in Job chapter 1, we find that Job, with all the things that he had, uh, beginning in verse number 2, uh, he had seven sons and three daughters. Verse 3, he had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 uh, she-asses, and a very great household. So this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So he had more than probably anybody we know. I mean, he's got everything that you can think of. He's got all this prosperity, all this material things, and his family, which is a, an amazing uh, amount of things to have. But you know what happens before you get to the end of this chapter? What happens is, is Job loses his seven sons and his three daughters. There's a wind that comes through, blows a house down that they're all in, and it kills every one of them. He loses all of his sheep. He loses all of his camels. He loses everything that he has. All of a sudden, what he has left is his, himself, his body, and his wife. It's like everything else he's lost. Now there's a few other things he may have, but for the majority, he's lost everything. And what he says there at the end, um, in verse 21 of Job chapter 1, he says, Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, and did not charge God foolishly. Now, y'all have to say, that's, that's an amazing man. To be able, first of all, losing seven sons and three daughters would be, I can't even imagine how devastating that would be. To lose all the material things of life that you have would be devastating. But Job says here at the end, the Lord has given it to me, the Lord has taken it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you think that Job trusted God? Do you think that, that Job really put his faith and his trust in, in God? He did. He did. Now, what our lesson is going to be today is about putting our trust in God. Because I think sometimes we may say it, but it's more difficult to, to do it than it is to say it. It's like a lot of other things in life. It's easy to say I'm going to do something. It's a lot more difficult to do it. You know, I, I can say today, hey... Uh, I think I'm going to start running 5Ks. Uh, you know, I'm going to start running with some of these boys and stuff, and I'm going to get in shape, and I'm going to run. I'm probably not going to do it. I can say it all day long, but I'm probably not. I never did like to run. Running just tear, hurts my stomach too much, especially after I've eaten so much. I can't run. Uh, but, I, but that's just not something I'm going to do. So I can say it in my mind, I'm going to do a lot of stuff, but unless I'm willing to do it, it don't mean a whole lot. But Job truly trusted God. And, and you can read, I mean, chapter 2, um, all of a sudden, God allows Satan to bring these boils upon him, and he has all these horrible things in his body, from his head to his toes, or to the bottom of his feet. And even his wife comes and says, Hey, listen, buddy, curse God and die. I mean, I can't stand to see you in, in this kind of situation. What a horrible uh, situation that, that you're in. I don't want to see you go through that. But he didn't do it. But in Job chapter 13, again, uh, oh by the way, uh, he's got friends to come to visit. I'm not sure I want some of his friends. 
Man, they, they were always looking and trying to, to figure out why it is that God is doing this to Job because Job must have messed up. He must have made a mistake. He must have done something he, sh he should not have done. And he didn't. Job didn't do anything that was wrong. Job was doing nothing but living for God. And he was trusting God. So in Job 13 and verse 15, uh, he said these words, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And I want us to think about that. No, no matter what happens to my life, yet will I trust God. You see, it's really easy to trust God when things are going well, right? When everything in my life is going the way I want it to go, when everybody in my life is doing what I want them to do, when everybody is following and doing the things that are right, it's easy to trust God. You see, it gets really difficult to trust God when things aren't going my way. It's harder to trust God when, when things of, uh, of life are, are difficult for me. When things aren't working out like I want them to work out. But even then, should I not still trust God? Even then, even in the midst of, of the trials and the tribulations and the pain and all the things that are happening, should I not trust Him with everything I have? Of course I should. <coughs> but why do I not do that sometimes? Who's telling me in my ear, hey, don't God's not coming through for you this time. Hey, God's not going to be there for you this time. The person that's talking in my ear is Satan, and he's telling me this stuff, and it causes me to back away from God. In the time of distress, should I not be running toward God? Should I not be striving to get to Him? Of course I should. But it's easy with the world and the things of the world to draw me away from Him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Brethren, that's the kind of faith we need to have in our God. Our God who created the heavens and the earth and everything that's in it. Our God who created us. We should love him and trust him more than anything else in the world. But we're being conditioned. We're being conditioned to trust money. We're being conditioned to trust power. We're being conditioned to trust everything that this old world has to offer and that comes into, into the carnal side of things. And even us in the church, we're being conditioned, hey, you need to trust this. Are we spiritual or carnal? If we're trusting in the world of riches, we're carnal. If we're trusting in the power of God and what He has for us, we're spiritual. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 through 3. I ask you this morning, who are you trusting in? Because if you're trusting in the things of this world, you're going to be let down. You're going to be upset because things are not always going to happen the way you want to. If you're putting your trust today in a certain individual, I don't care who that individual is. I don't care if, if, if it's me or, or one of your family members. Or you're going to be let down. Why? Because everybody has problems. Everybody falls short. But if you trust God, you will never let be let down. Oh, wait a minute, Johnny. You're saying that if I trust God, I'll never have problems. Well, I didn't say that because Job trusted God, and Job had problems. Job believed in God. He trusted Him even to the point that he was willing to die for God. No, you trust God. You put your faith and your hope in Him. You put everything that you have upon Him. In Proverbs chapter number 3, the, uh, as Solomon was speaking... Proverbs chapter 3, one of my favorite passages. Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse 5, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And y'all, we have trouble with that. We have trouble with that. Because I want to understand everything. I want to know everything. But I can't know everything. I don't care how smart I am. I don't care if my IQ is 12,000, which it can't be. But I mean, it, even if it was, I still would not know everything. How many of y'all understand how the earth is just sitting in the middle of space and just floating? How, how, do you, how many of us understand how that, that turns so much you know, per day and you know, 365 and one-fourth days that we, we have a year? How many of us truly understand that? I don't. How many of us understand how the stars are just up there? 
Where'd it come from? Oh, you know that big bang that happened years ago on the earth when mankind was created? The stars just kind of created themselves too. That's so much baloney. Am I using baloney in a good way? It's just that's it's just garbage that people believe that. No, our God created the heavens and the earth. He created the, the, the stars in the sky. He created the moon and the sun. He created everything that we know. So why shouldn't I trust Him? Solomon says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Brother, your heart there is not the blood pump. Your heart there symbolizes the inner you. It's who you are. It's your mind. It's, your, it, it, it's, it's everything about the person that you are. Trust in Him with all your heart. And, and I can tell you, you can trust other things in life. And I promise you, you're going to be let down. Let's say you, tr you trust your physical ability to do a certain task. Well, what happens one day when you can't do that task anymore? I've watched a lot of people in my life go from being very capable of doing things physically to not being able to do them physically. And you have too. What happens when you can't trust in that anymore? What happens when, when you can't trust in, in, in people that are supposed to be your leaders? How many government leaders have we had our trust in only to be very much deceived and very much hurt? How many friends have you trusted in that, that you thought, well, man, they were just your best buddy and, and no matter what happened in life, they would always be there for you. And then something happened in life and they were not there for you. Anytime you put your full trust in man, I promise you you're going to be disappointed. He didn't say that, did he? That's not what Solomon said. Solomon said, trust the Lord with all your heart. And lean not into your own understanding. You may not understand everything. But that's where the trust comes in. God, why am I going through this trial right now? What, you know, why is this happening to me? Trust in Him. Put your faith in Him and let it go. Trust in Him that He's going to lead you in the right direction. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. You have to allow God to direct you. Here's the amazing thing about God. I mean, there's so much amazing about Him, but here's the one amazing thing. God is, is infinite. He's, you know, he's all-powerful. He's always present. He's always everywhere you go. He's there. He knows your every thought. He knows your every move. He knows everything about you, even down to how many hairs are on your head. And you've probably, if you took a shower this morning, you probably lost three or four. God knows exactly how many hairs you have. God knows what you need before you ask Him. He knows everything about you. There's nothing that's hidden from Him. You may think you're hiding stuff from God, but you can't hide anything from Him. He knows everything. And yet He still loves you. He knows everything about you and He loves you. And therefore, since He loves you, He wants what's best for you. And if you will let Him direct your paths, your life will be so much better. Now, does that mean that if, you know, if I follow God, I'm going to be like a lot of the preachers on TV? They say, listen, you follow God and you're going to have all kinds of riches. Again, baloney, that's not true. God never promised that. How many of the apostles were millionaires? Zero. Even God's own son, when he was here upon the earth, he said he didn't have a place to lay down. He says foxes, the whole, uh, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. I don't have anywhere to lay my head down. So this the idea that, hey, you follow God, it's going to be prosperous and you're going to have all this money. That's baloney. That, 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 he never promised that. What he did promise is if you follow him and let him direct your, uh, your past, everything's going to be great. Meaning that no matter what happens, no matter, even if you lose your life for the cause of Christ, it's still okay. Why? Because you put your trust and your faith in him. 
when Stephen in, in Acts chapter six, he is chosen as one of the um, one of the deacons, or what we call deacons. I think it's what they were. But in Acts six, he's chosen. In Acts seven, he is preaching the gospel. Do you think Stephen was afraid of what was about to happen to him? I don't think he was. I think he really trusted God. He believed in God even to the point that when they picked up the stones in the, at the end of chapter 7 and stoned him to death, he looked up and he seen Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Father, lay not this sin to the charge. He trusted God even to death. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. Now I'm going to ask you, brethren, are you acknowledging God in all your ways? Are you truly acknowledging Him, His leadership, His direction, His power, His love? Are you doing that in your life? If you're not, you need to think about it. You need to get that, you need to get that working. You need to become the person that God wants you to be. I hope that in your prayers, every time that you pray, that you pray to God that He would help you to become the person you're supposed to be. Creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Help me, Father, be the person you want me to be. And the person I am today may not be the person that God wants me to be, and He may, he may change me. But that's where you let God be the potter and you be the clay. Let God change you into the person that He wants you to be. Going back to Proverbs 3, verse number 6. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. He will lead you the way you need to go. But you've got to trust Him. You've got to put your faith and your hope in Him. <coughs> How do you do that? Well, one of the big things is you've got to be reading His Word. You've got to read His Word. His Word tells you what He wants from you. Alright, John, so you're saying the Bible says different things to different people. Yes and no. The Bible says the same thing. It is the Word of God. It doesn't change. But all of us are different in the aspect that we have different personalities. <coughs> we have different ideas about certain things. But as you read the Scripture and you, you change and mold yourself into being that person that God wants you to be, God will use you in different ways than He'll use me. That's where you have the, par the, you know, the parable of the talents, Matthew 25. We, use, we have different kinds of talents. The Word of God doesn't change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is His will. It's His Word. But it can change you into being the person that He wants you to be. Paul talked about in Ephesians till we come to the fullness of the knowledge of Christ. Well, that's where we're working on. We're trying to become the people that God wants us to be. What happens is if we ever stop short, and we say, well, you know, I think I'm far enough along and, and I'm done. I'm, I don't need to read anymore. I don't need to study anymore. You're selling yourself short and you're, you're making a disconnect with God. Because this is how your Father talks to you. He talks to you through His Word. Read it. Study it. You may say, well, it don't make any sense to me. That's just, you know, some of it don't make any sense. I can't understand it. Keep reading it. Keep reading and pray for the Holy Spirit to help you understand Help me understand what I'm reading. Keep reading. You know, it's funny, we, get, we, we send our kids to school and, and they, for example, end up in an English class. Well, I should have took more English classes probably, but you end up in an English class and you have to read this story. And then you've got to take a test over the story. Well, if our kids were to read that story and then go take the test and, and bomb it, we would say what? They didn't read the story. More than likely, that's true. Because if you fail a test like that, you didn't pay attention to the story, or maybe you skimmed it or just read parts of it. If you if you take time and you read the story and you comprehend it, then you go take a test and you can you may not make a hundred, but you're gonna be on up there. If you're just skimming the word of God, if you're trying to check out the cliff notes, read it. Let it become part of who you are. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Let God lead you to where He wants you to be. Verse number 7 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. 
Be not wise in your own eyes. Don't think that you've got everything figured out and that, that you're smarter than anybody else. If you ever walk into a room and you see somebody else walk in the room and that person feels like that they're the smartest person in the room, or maybe you walk in a room thinking you're the smartest person in the room. Be not wise in your own eyes. What can happen there is you find out real quick that you don't know near what you thought you did. That can happen. Be not wise in your own eyes. But he says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord. Respect God for who He is. Make sure that we don't lose that, by the way. Yeah, we're trusting in the Lord, but let's make sure we remember who He is and what He's done and what He's capable of doing. Think about all the miracles that have been that happened. Even the miracle of, of in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I mean, that wasn't a natural thing that happened then. God created. He made it. What about God forming man from the dust of the ground and breathing into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul? Is that natural? No. But God did that. He created Adam. And then he took a rib out of Adam and created Eve. Thus started the human race. God is so amazing, so powerful, and so almighty that we don't sometimes comprehend how great He is. And yet we need to spend our lifetime trying to understand and be, be amazed at what God is able to do. And you know, it's not that God created the heavens and the earth and said, okay, I'm done, man. I'm walking away. I'm leaving. He's still there for us. He's there for us every day. And He wants us to be there for Him. There, there's nothing that pleases God more than for, for His children to be obedient and to walk in His way. That's what He wants. He wants us to walk in His way. He's not one that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. <coughs> Excuse me. He wants everybody to be saved. You know why people are not going to be saved? Because they're not willing to acknowledge Him in all their ways. Because they're not willing to follow Him. Because they're not willing to trust Him. They're trusting themselves. They're trusting what the world has to offer and man, all this stuff that the world has to offer is going to be what? Burned up. It's going to be gone. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. It's going to be gone. Everything that we know. And y'all, we, we see that even in our own lives. Been going through some old stuff at, at my house that, that we just kind of piled into one room. So I've been going through different things. Well, I found where back in 1999, uh, my mom and dad had an auction. And... Basically, they were selling their house, moving into mine and Kim's old house, and they didn't want to carry all the stuff with them. They auctioned all that stuff off. You know, that stuff years ago, to me, was important. Now, there's still a few things that are important. Old staple guns that we used that we made, I don't know how many pallets over the years. But, you know, even the stuff that we used back then, it's not usable now. You might be able to rebuild some of it. You might be able to reuse some of it. But what happens as time goes on? Rust and corruption, right? Things happen. Things get old. Things, things die. Then you can't get parts sometimes to fix certain things. Think back to your childhood. Think back to, to some of the houses that you remember as a kid that today are no longer. They don't even stand anymore. Somebody's come through and torn them down. Maybe they burned down. Something happened. There was a store that sit right over here. I've seen pictures. I kind of I, I, I remember coming by when it was still standing. It's gone. This whole community, think about how big it used to be and how many people lived here and, and all the action that was going on. Well, there's still a lot of people live here and actually more live here now than when I first came to Kimmins uh, back in 02. But you think about, it's different. And the old sawmill and the old parts of the sawmill and the stuff, it's gone. But, but you can say that about anywhere in Lewis County or anywhere in the state or in the, in the world. Things change. But what remains the same? God. God has never changed. He's always there for you. He's always there wanting you to follow Him. Go back to our text and we're, we're about to wrap up. But he says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. In verse 7, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear Him. Trust God. Respect Him. And depart from the evil things of life. But he says in verse 8, It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. 
I promise you your life will be better once you trust God. Once you put your faith and your hope and your trust and your decision in God. There was a situation that took place said, as the children of Israel had come out of Egypt. They had crossed the Jordan River. <clears throat> God had told them to go into the land and possess the land. Right? So they end up getting to Jericho. Well, Jericho had this, it had this huge wall around it. So they were sitting there thinking, well, we can't do anything with this city. We can't get over the wall. We can't get through the gates because they got locked. We can't win against this city. And what did God say? Hey, listen. Listen to what I have to say, he said. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to march around the city one time a day for six days. And on the seventh day, I want you to march around it seven times, and I want the, the priest to, to, to shout and, and to blow on the horns, and I want the people to shout with a great noise, and what's going to happen is that whole wall is going to fall down, and then you can take the city. It would have been very easy for, for Joshua and the other the, the children of Israel to say, okay, Father, I think you've lost your mind. How's that going to change anything? I mean... And listen, the first day that they did that, the people that were on the inside of Jericho, they were watching them. They were scared of them. They were afraid of them. But I wonder how many began to mock them and said, look at the, these people have lost their... They're just marching around the city. What are they going to do? Oh, they marched around and stopped. They didn't do anything. Second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. By the sixth day, I'm sure there's others that begin to say, y'all have lost your mind. Maybe screaming from the wall, leave us alone, get away from here. But on the seventh day, when they did what God told them to do, the walls came down. Let me tell you this morning, you trust God, you put your faith in Him, you follow what He tells you to do in His Word, the walls will come down. Definitely when you trust Him and acknowledge Him in all your life, in all your ways. It would definitely be a blessing in your life. But let me add one little thing to that. And I'm not adding to God's Word, but I'm adding one more point. When it's a blessing in your life, because you're trusting God and you're following God, do you think it's going to help anybody else? It will. It's going to help people in your family. It's going to help people you work with. It's going to help your friends, everybody. Because what you're doing, how you're living, you're trusting God. Put your trust in Him. It's going to be contagious. People will see it. That's what we need to be known for as Christians. People that trust God with everything that we have. Even in the midst of trial, even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of losing everything that we have, physically, financially, whatever, we still trust Him because He is faithful. <coughs> even when we don't believe, He's still faithful, right? Even when we don't trust, He's still there for us. Are you trusting God like you should today? If you've never obeyed the gospel, let me encourage you this morning to, to make that decision. <coughs> to go ahead and give your life to Christ. Believe in Him this morning with all your heart. Be willing today to repent of your sins. Confess your faith in Christ to be the Son of God. And then be baptized for the remission of your sins. If you weren't away from the fall, we encourage you to come home. Make that correction with Him today. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Did you come this morning? Please come as we stand and sing.